it looks kind of a little bit green and gross or whatever, but that liver cooks up a bright orange and it has a wonderful flavor. And it's not something we want to throw away. It's something that we would want to take out of there and you can use it, for example, to make a little bit of cream sauce. And a little bit of cream sauce will have a real lobstery rich flavor. You can put that little cream sauce through a, uh, a, a, a strainer right at the end and use that to flavor this meat that's back here in the tail. And then you'll see this yellow stripe here. That's again because we've got a female and there's not a lot, but she's beginning to produce the roe, which would be the little baby lobsters, that yellow stripe. Right? And if you don't know what that is, if you move that yellow stripe and all that stuff is junk that we would just throw away this stuff right here, this bright yellow. That's a rose sack. And again, when it's cooked, it'll turn bright orange and it has a real intense lobstery flavor. And so it can be used in a sauce or even very carefully removed and just very, very lightly cooked and used as a garnish on top of lobster to do something very, very pretty, that last little kind of coup de gras piece. All right? I love something, Chef. I love something. Good, good. Okay. Oh, very carefully. Uh, with your knife, your fingers, yeah, I would just very, very, very carefully just pull it, pull it out of there. So again, use for use in recipes. And usually what I do, honestly, Julie, is I make a sauce out of it, and I would carefully with my fingers, I would remove that whole piece. Oh wow. Exactly. This piece right and here. This is not. And then, and then th there's there's meat in there. Yeah. And if you serve <coughs> the thing, there's customers who'll bust these and actually yeah. suck a little tubes of meat out of here. There's a decent amount of meat in here and a decent amount of meat in the crab, in the claws. Um, a nice way just I guess to finish up answering the kind of question you are is how might I serve this then is I might I might take this meat out, get it all nicely arranged, put it back in there. And then I might make a little bit of some kind of lobster stuffing and put it right in here so that the thing could then be broiled or baked. Okay. It could even be grilled. And then I would make a sauce out of this coral and the row, and then I would crack out the lobster claw and put that on top so you have the lobster claw looking real pretty with this sauce on top. You would serve it in the shell because there's a lot of flavor and stuff there. <laughs> and charge $400. <laughs> Crabs are crustaceans. These are crawfish dead, all these things. It's just a little baby one. Sometimes these can live in fresh water. Uh, believe it or not, right out here behind the school in the Spokane River, uh, there are these guys. And they're about this size and they're quite edible. Uh, and they can be fun to catch. Believe it or not, you can take a string and you tie a weight on it that could just be anything that sinks um, and, and put a piece of bacon on it. And you just lower it down in the rocks and sit there and drink your beer. And after a while, you'll feel them actually pulling and tugging on the string. And you don't need a hook or anything. You just pick it up and they're too dumb to let go of the bacon. Or maybe they're smart enough to know not to let go of the bacon. But anyway, you pick them up, you can put them in your bucket and you cook what them I in. Pulled out, <laughs> what I pulled out right here, left there, is the adductor muscle. The adductor muscle is the part of the oyster that does the opening and shutting. And I point that out to you. By the way, this is mm, really yummy. very lovely. Well. For example, there are fish, specialty fish and shellfish, crustaceous, that you cannot fish with a line, that you can fish only by snorkeling. So you cannot even scuba dive. Like sea urchin, you cannot get, if you get caught scuba diving and harvesting a sea urchin, you go to jail. You have to have a, a snorkeling. You cannot have any oxygen. It makes it harder, and uh, you need. I mean, you have to have a big wheel in order to get it. Right. So I think it's that's uh, again with sustainability. Um, this is called a J cut. It's actually had the head cut off. It's, it's 
sometimes it'll look more like a J if they cut up in here, gives it the J appearance. Um, as you can see, it's come skin on, but it's already been scaled. The scales are removed from this. Um, this sea bass is another one that I think that would be something that would really be loved by people who really love this. You know what? I might be that guy that got busted for ordering the lamb yeah. at that restaurant. Yeah. Time. I would really, not there, but I would generally prefer lamb to fish. Uh, but man, you start looking at something like this. Um, Chef, would you skin that before serving? No, I would uh, serve it skin on and grill it on the skin side yeah. and yes. make it beautiful. Plate it. <laughs> Who was that yesterday? Played it, Darian. Played it, skin up. Huh? And look, look at that beautiful skin. And the customer doesn't want to eat the skin. Remove the skin itself. But it's beautiful. And it holds the fish. It's one of the fish that if you skin it, when you cook it, it can fall apart. So the skin holds it together. And like Chef Nick said, it's scaled already. So you don't have the mess to scale a fish, which is messy. Right. So, so this is an example of one of the things that I've been trying to do. It's good sometimes for the food to look like food. It's nice when the fish looks like a piece of fish. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to look like what we somehow or another got used to when it's squares of white stuff. All right? It's okay if the fish looks I, like I, fish. I started we to serve a... talked about octopus. What do you want to say about octopus? You the ink say? pocket is removed and the bone is removed on this one. So it's 100% usable. They found out that, oh, they can make money with the ink. And, uh, uh, you know, to serve it for pasta dishes where you can dye your pasta with, uh, with uh, octopus ink or do some sauce with it. Uh, so they remove it now. They remove the, the, the ink. Um, it was an opportunity to see a fish in the round. And that's a terminology that if I was really testing on it. So what does in the round mean? In the round means this is how this fish was, just how it came out of the ocean. Look, it hasn't even had its belly split or its guts removed or anything. And in that case, we know that, first of all, this fish has not been dead for very long. These are farm-raised in the Mediterranean. This was taken out of the ocean and flown here. It's probably only two or three, four days old at the very, very most. So, so very, very recently dead. Very They're healthy. neat because they, they grow. They, we get them uniformly. Uh, and so we can serve a fish as an entree, and the whole fish makes a wonderful presentation grill. I would gut it, maybe put a bunch of herbs and lemon grill it, and yeah. and it grill it, brushing it with. Uh, it's a big, it's a big, very, very popular fish in the south of France called Dorade. That's Bronzino. It's the same family. Yeah. Uh, my, my, I had a lot of problems serving whole fish. I uh, was uh, serving trout at the restaurant. And I wanted to do a, a classic truite manière or amandine, you know, and uh, very classic. But everybody was like, oh, I don't want to see the head. I don't want to see the tail. Chef, can you fillet it for me? <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I gave up. I gave up <laughs> serving old fish because it would not sell. And I would have it always come back in the kitchen. Oh, customer, like, like your lobsters. Can we get it off the shelf? Well, Chef, can you fillet the fish for me? And it's just... You know, it's 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 different culture. Well, they're very, very highly fatty. This is one of those predatory fish. It's even questionable about whether we're overfishing this, but absolutely notorious uh, for sushi specifically. Um, and that's what we got this piece for, is specifically so that we get an opportunity tomorrow to try it in the form of eviscerate. If you eviscerate a fish, Take your knife and stick it right in its butthole, and then and then right and then right up the belly of the fish like this. Yeah. And, that's, and that's how you open it up, oh, and all of the internal organs will come stuff. out in that one nice out. great big piece. Hand me that trash can behind you, would you, Kathy? And you throw those you because those could be toxic, right? Out. It's, this is this is this is just the guts that is it, again most of the time because the guts and the internal parts of the fish are the parts that are most likely to spoil. Yeah. And so most of the time we get fish, they immediately do this part of it so that the fish doesn't spoil.